morning. I am not eating. Uh, welcome to Hickory Hills Presbyterian Church this morning. Edie is home nursing some laryngitis and a cold-like thing, and she was courteous enough to not come and share. So she's been tested. She knows what it's not, but like the cough that seems to be hitting everybody, you just keep coughing and you don't know why. So welcome. Welcome back to our live stream, friends, after a two-week break. A couple of announcements. Um, we are collecting some games, uh, board games, card games type things, for all ages for the Jones Center Christmas party. Our goal is to gather up 50 games, and they are due here at the church by Sunday, December 10th. Our Tree of Warmth is dis on display in the narthex and will be available from now until December. For your donations of gloves, hats, scarves, for those in need, your generosity is always appreciated. Our Christmas tea will be held on Sunday, December 3rd from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. There is a sign-up sheet out on the narthex table. Um, Advent readers are needed, and this says to see Reverend Edie today, so you may have to like do email or something because you won't see her today. Um, fellowship. Uh, we do need people to sign up to assist with fellowship, and then we need people that sign up to remember that they're supposed to do it. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, the micro pantry is seeing some heavy use uh, coming into the holidays. It was being emptied almost on a daily basis. Um, so if uh, you find it in your heart to bring in donations, they pretty much need everything of the stable type items that they put out there for that. Any other announcements that... Uh, If you weren't able to hear that, um, an anonymous donator put out into the pantry instead of bringing into the church and getting put out there, but some hams and sweet potatoes and the makings for a Thanksgiving meal uh, were donated and just put out into the pantry and were gone almost instantly. And you said a second? Socks? Oh, so I said gloves, hats, scarves, but socks are also appreciated. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other? Please join us in our call to worship. Well, as, as Rick said, you notice that Edie is not here. She is pretty much silent at home, much to the delight of her family. Glad to see all of you here this morning. No, is not that deep that we should uh, worry about it. So let's join in our call to worship. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. Your statutes stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days, O Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have willed to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King. Grant that the people of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under the gentle and loving rule of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The 
first hymn this morning is number 619 in the hymnal, Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. Let us cry, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Come, let us join together and confess our sins. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ as Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him and are slow to acknowledge his rule. We give allegiance to the powers of this world and fail to be governed by your justice and love. In your mercy, forgive us. Raise us to acclaim him as ruler of all. In the way we may be loyal ambassadors, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear these words of assurance from the book of Revelation. Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. With his blood, he has purchased people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Christ has made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign over the earth. Thanks be to God that in Christ we are reconciled and made whole. And it is Christ, the shepherd king, that gives us peace. Please take a moment to share that peace with those around you.
Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, beginning with verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples, gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring, them, bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. This is the word of God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness turns to hell. And trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God.
Our gospel reading today comes from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are my members, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Edie couldn't be here, but we have her heart. She put her thoughts down on paper, and so I just, the big mouth I am, I get to be Edie's mouth today. This is Christ the King Sunday. What, it, what does it mean to proclaim Christ as king? When we think of kings, we think of people in big crowns and long ermine robes. We think of wealth and power. When we think of kings, we think of the images from our history classes or from movies or from fairy tales of our childhood. Kings are powerful people. They hold the power of life and death over people. Kings can be kind, but that can mean they are seen as weak. Kings can also be cruel tyrants, abusing the powers that they have been granted, which makes me think of the Queen of Hearts 
in Alice in Wonderland running around shouting, off with their head, off with their head. But all of these images aside, when we proclaim Jesus as our king, we mean something very different. The difference is the kind of king we understand Jesus to be. After his resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven. Our faith tells us that he is seated at the right hand of God the Father and that he will be both judge and counsel in the final judgment. This means that Jesus will serve both as a defense attorney and judge. Matthew tells us the Son of Man, Jesus, will sit on his throne of glory and separate the sheep and the goats. But Jesus is not just a distant king looking out over a kingdom and ruling from afar. Jesus is a shepherd king. We call Jesus both king and shepherd. What does it mean to say that Jesus is our shepherd? Shepherds get their hands dirty. They worry about the sheep. They seek the loss. They make sure that they have what they need. The shepherd decides where the best pasture is, where to find water. Shepherds protect the sheep. They look out for the wolves and other wild animals. The shepherd keeps the flock together and goes out searching for any who are lost. Most kings have shepherds who do their work for them. Jesus is both king and shepherd, and we are his flock. Ezekiel describes the shepherd king seeking the scattered, seeking the lost sheep throughout the nations, rescuing them when they are scattered, binding up the injured, strengthening the weak, and executing judgment. This brings us to Jesus' parable of the sheep and the goats, the shepherd king who has come to judge his flock. This parable seems straightforward. We read the story of the sheep and the goats, and we know that we want to end up being in the sheep category, not the goats. We want to be the people that are richly blessed and not condemned. As a result, we look for ways that we can be sheep and not be goats, and we figure that the best way is to look at what the sheep do. Sheep care for other people, so we give them, a, so we give a little bit more to the food pantry. We make sure we bring in our offering. We volunteer to help at the soup kitchen or ring bells for the Salvation Army. We pick up an extra set of mittens, hats, toys, and socks for the Tree of Warmth, for the Jones Center. We send an extra card or two. We get busy doing things. After we sit down and hopefully feel at least a little better about ourselves, we feel like maybe we've done something right. Or at least we hope that our good intentions get us the credit that we deserve. That allows us to feel pretty good about where we are. Or at the very least, to feel better than those other people who didn't do anything for anybody but themselves. We get caught up then in the comparison game. I know that I'm not doing everything I should, but at least I'm not as bad as so-and-so. They don't care about anybody but themselves. The problem is this very simple reading of the parables of the parable pulls it out of context. It pulls it out of its framework among all the other parables that Jesus told. It isn't that what we deserve, it isn't that what we do to serve others is bad. The things that we do help someone else are good things. But if our primary focus is about looking good or at least looking better than someone else, then we're missing what Jesus is saying altogether. When we place this parable alongside of all the others, When we center ourselves in the temple at the very end of Jesus' ministry, what can we see that might be a little different? We most often begin with the question, am I a sheep or am I a goat? We worry about it. We wonder. We hope. We pray. We trust that the promise that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. But we wonder just a little bit about who are the sheep and who are the goats. But the reality is, it does not matter at all whether we think we are sheep or goats. It doesn't matter if your next door neighbor is a sheep or a goat. The question is not really about the sheep or the goats at all. The question is, where is Christ 
in the midst of this story. The question is not, where can I locate myself in the parable? The bigger, more important question is, where do we see Jesus? Jesus, the one who sits on the throne of glory, who will judge the nations, is the one who can be found in prison, hungry, naked, thirsty, a stranger, and sick. The one who will have all things set under his feet can be found not in the palaces of glory, but locked up as a common criminal. He is the starving beggar that was stepped over by someone in a hurry to get somewhere else. He is the child begging for a cup of clean water. He is the man being held hostage by Hamas, desperate to see his family again. He is the child separated from their family as they flee their homes in Palestine ahead of the Israeli army. The king is found not in the temples or palaces, or even in the church buildings like this one. The one who will judge the nations can be found in the places of fear, of darkness, and of need. This parable is not about the sheep and goats, who's in and who's out. This parable is about where we find Jesus. Jesus is found not on the throne of glory, but in the faces of those in need. In his ministry on earth, Jesus made it clear that the poor and the distressed were people who mattered to him. He sought out sinners, tax collectors, and prostitutes. He healed people who were unclean, lepers, and outcasts. Jesus had conversations with people that no one else paid attention to, like the woman at the well. Jesus called ordinary fishermen to come and to be his partners in his ministry. The King of kings and the Lord of lords can be found not in a palace, but in a stable. He didn't serve in office or in any official capacity. He wandered the towns and in the wilderness, meeting people where they are, seeking them as much as they sought him. The parable of the sheep and the goats makes it clear that Jesus is not the kind of king that we are used to thinking of. Jesus, the good shepherd, is willing to get his hands dirty, to reach out, to touch, and to connect with those in need. Jesus makes no distinction between those who are deserving or not. He doesn't. He doesn't list off qualifications or set up rules that have to be met. Jesus said that all who are in need are to be regarded as brothers and sisters. Why? Because in being willing to connect with others, we serve Christ himself. Jesus stands in solidarity with his followers. Yes, of course, but Jesus also places himself again and again with those who are on the edge, those who are on the margins, those no one else will claim. We are called to be like Jesus and place ourselves not in the role of sheep or even in the role of goats. We are to put ourselves in the shoes of those who are in need because this is where we will find Jesus. This means that we have to set aside our worries about sheep and goats and to look for Jesus. If Jesus can be found where the needs are greatest, then we must go there. If Jesus is found with the lost and the lonely, then we must go with him. Ultimately, this parable is about love, not judgment. This parable is about the radical love of God, the love that does not care about who is deserving or who belongs, the love that reaches past wounds to the needs that lie beneath. We can learn to see Jesus in every single person that we meet, no matter who they are. We can learn to look for the opportunities to live as Jesus lived, to connect with and have real conversations with those who need a friend, to give love away even if we will not be loved back, to give our precious time to sit with someone in need, Jesus does not demand huge gestures of faith from us. In fact, Jesus is calling us to the ordinary, to the most basic opportunities in life. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. These acts of love require no training, no particular ability. They are something every single one of us can do. 
today, and in doing so, we may just meet Jesus face to face. Amen. Thank you, Edie. Are there joys or concerns that we should share among each other? Yes, Evelyn. And her name? Lori. Yes, ma'am.
Yes. What's your friend's name? Joanne. Any other? Um, since we're able to be back up in live streaming, Shannon Bastion has uh, asked for healing for her hip. Um, she's having some issues with that. And she sends her greeting because she doesn't see us very often anymore since so she moved away. Oh, go ahead. You're loud. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, you, we hear over and over in the Bible about falling to our knees before you to praise you. We ask that you help us not fall so often and not fall when it hurts. We ask that your healing hand come over Lori Shannon, Landon, Doris, Joanne, Kate, and all of those that we name in our hearts that we know that need healing and wholeness um, that only you can bring to us. We thank you for the joys of celebrations, for Thanksgiving, for being able to eat um, when things didn't look so good. We thank you for the celebration of birthdays and the joy of celebrating another year in your service. We ask for peace in the lands where they just don't know peace right now. We can't even imagine what it's like to return to a home that's bombed out. We ask that you enter into the hearts of those in that lead and guide countries, that they, they might move towards peaceful resolution. We have these things and so many other things in our hearts that we just don't always even say out loud, but we do know that you do hear our prayer and that our prayers do get answered. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hello.
our closing hymn this morning, Fairest Lord Jesus, which is number 630 in the hymnal, or there'll be some words up here. Please stand as you are able. As we go out into the world today, look for Jesus in the face of those around you. Look at the hungry. Look at the poor, the needy, the imprisoned, the sick. You will find Jesus there. And we ask that his light shine upon us as we go out into the world to take his peace with us. Amen. Amen.